There's actually a lot in San Francisco that is happening around this space. In terms of this change in momentum, I think back to a couple years ago when everyone was saying, let's stay private as long as we can. What has been the catalyst here to bring some of these companies to come around to actually getting out and listing? The companies are getting mature. We're at the end of a very, very good tech cycle, so it's about time for them to go public. Alex, I've been through three of these cycles, 80s, 90s, and now now. We had many, many more IPOs back in the 80s and 90s. It's actually, next year might be a good year, a lot of marquee names, won't be a great year. We should be seeing around three times the number of IPOs we're seeing right now. So, Duncan, I want to tap into some of that um, historical knowledge that you do have. You've seen a few of these cycles. I get the question very often, uh, with this many companies going out, does this uh, kind of foreshadow a bubble like we saw in 2000? That was the last time we saw this many large tech companies, more than a billion dollar potential listings, getting out the door. Uh, does this foreshadow some kind of a bu bubble here? I think not at all. There was We had more IPOs in 2015 than we had in 2018. I don't think 2019 will exceed 2015 in numbers. I had two IPOs in the bubble in the 90s, so I lived through it. Again, we should be having many, many more of these companies go out. We've made it really difficult to go public, and as a consequence, most people stay on the sidelines, and instead are taking money from all these new mega funds like the SoftBank Vision Fund. This just locks them up for a much longer time in the private markets. I'm actually a fan of tech companies being public. I would think if Uber had gone public years ago, uh, Travis would still be running it today because he would have been policed much better by the public markets. We wouldn't have seen Theranos and the huge fraud if that had been a public company. So I'm a fan of companies getting out in the public markets. They're better regulated, they're better understood, and it's better for everybody involved. And that governance issue is an interesting one, and it's one that has been brought up uh, more often these days. I mean, historically, companies list why for capital raiser or acquisition capital, but they're doing that privately now, uh, to your point. In terms of governance, when you talk to portfolio companies who are looking to get closer to listing, what are the top things on the mind when you say, look, uh, moving into the big leagues of being a public company, these are the things that management needs to be focused on? Well, first of all, steady earnings. They need to have predictable earnings. That's probably the biggie. Second, they've got to upgrade, certainly the financial side, because you have to deal with the quagmire of Sarbanes-Oxley. It's actually much more expensive and complicated to go public today. And the third thing, they've got to stay long term. You look at the best tech companies, Apple, Google, they didn't go to quarterly earnings. They didn't go short term. They stayed long term in their research and development and their planning for markets. I think number three is often overlooked, the most important thing of all for tech companies. When you do think about uh, general sentiment, um, public tech companies, those stocks have obviously been hammered over the last uh, few weeks here, and it doesn't seem like they're getting any reprieve. How much uh, does watching the Facebooks, Apples, Netflix, Alphabets of the world change the decision-making process for management teams that are looking to go public? It shouldn't change it much. Those are The fangs were extraordinarily overvalued, incredible companies. Um, but I must tell you something. If you look at the tech sector, even today, or even a few months ago when it was higher valued, and compare it to the 1990s, the disparity of valuation to earnings is much, much lower today. These companies are not in any way bubble stocks. I just think we're seeing a normal sort of rotation out of one sector that's gotten to be too big a percent of the total market into other sectors. I don't think it in any way indicates real trouble in the tech sector. So then do you see this as potentially a buying opportunity um, for companies whose valuations are depressed? If, if put yourself in the shoes of a public market investor. Is this actually a plus uh, that uh, things are potentially a little cheaper? I think it's a real plus for the next layer down of coming companies. You know, we're having, as I said before, marquee companies have gone public or going public. Some of these will generate incredibly strong earnings. I would focus on them. The leaders are the leaders, but there's a level below which are really strong future companies with more appreciation baked into them. And a lot of those leaders are consumer tech, and we have not seen um, a rush of consumer tech companies. The bread and butter for new listings has typically been out of the enterprise. Uh, we're about to potentially have a really big moment with Uber, with Lyft, uh, potentially Airbnb, uh, Pinterest, House, all of these names getting thrown out there. Uh, why do you think consumer tech is having this moment right now of companies finally being of the maturity that they could look to be the next big public company? 
Well, they're extraordinarily well, fast growing, well run, fast growing companies. It's extraordinary. The rate at which Uber or Lyft have been generating revenue and transforming our lives is just mind boggling. And there's more behind them like this. Certainly, the scooter companies will eventually get to this point. We're seeing a complete transformation of mobility in this country. That's why they deserve and are getting these really high valuations. But I will point out, there's a lot of really good B2B companies that have been going public. And there's some more going out over the next year or so. Some of them in the security area, some of them just in SaaS. These companies are also being well valued, but they're very good, very steady, predictable earnings companies. I would look there and not just on the big, sexy, glossy companies that get all the headlines. And I want to kind of break down into that SaaS group a little bit. We do have a, a name that I know a lot of folks are excited about. Qualtrics is on the road right now. They are uh, looking to list. Um, they are a competitor to SurveyMonkey, which just listed a, a number of weeks ago. In terms of software as a service companies, when you break down under the hood of what sectors you think will be busier, is it security? Is it software? Is it uh, more of these software type applications? Where gets you really excited in the enterprise space? Well, some of the security ones get me excited. Um, I think Cloudflare is going to go out. We have Tanium in the future. But the other place is just core enterprise applications. There are things in, in like Workday is a big company with HR, but there are some other up and comers doing HR to a broader market. I would look there. Uh, security is actually highly invested in, so in effect, it's too competitive. But a lot of the core SaaS companies doing core enterprise functions look really solid, and they can have a fairly strong lock on their market sectors. And, you know, I just do want to point out the last time three 11-figure uh, U.S. tech companies went public. It was the same year Bill Clinton was president and Apple was worth less than 1% of Microsoft. So uh, quickly here, can you characterize the excitement level of 1 to 10 being through the roof in terms of how jazzed you are for listings in 2019? Well, I am jazzed seven or eight in the quality of the companies. I'm not jazzed in the quantity getting out because a lot of people are avoiding it. To give you an example, one of our companies we decided to take public in Australia. Uh -huh. Why? They have the 1990s rules. They're very friendly to the retail investor. We shouldn't overlook the fact that we changed the game. You put $10,000 in Amazon in 1997, you're worth close to 10 million today. A normal retail investor could get rich off of tech. We were democratizing wealth creation in this country. When we made the changes to IPOs, mm -hmm. it became an insider game, and all the insiders get all the money, and the retail investors left out. Well, so we, we went will, to Australia uh, in part because they're still a retail-friendly market for IPOs. 